Well, we are back on Morning Line. Clint Kelly's here with me on the big show, taking your phone calls, talking medical malpractice. It's good to have Clint on. We've got Jackie that had waited. I said we had mm -hmm. some calls to get to, and we'll take her next. Jackie, good morning. Hi, Jackie. Hello there. Hello. How can we help you? Well, me? Yep. You know, I, I called you about two years ago. Mm -hmm. I guess I was making the wrong comment because you hung up on me abruptly. But I was calling about kidney disease and malpractices. I was trying to share how kidney disease and COVID had a connection because I've been on the kidney machine for over eight years. The malpractice part is where the surgeons, when they map your arm to give you uh, the fistula or the, eye, the, the go in your vein mm -hmm. so you can get your dialysis treatment. They put one in my arm that never worked. Hmm. Then, then they are telling you when you go to get your dialysis treatment that that the um, that the thing they put in your arm clotted, it clotted, it clotted. So I got over twenty surgeries on one arm. Ask her what it has to do with COVID. What, that, what, that, what does they, that have to do with the COVID? Part? Is there a connection with the COVID, COVID there? The reason I feel it's connected with the COVID because underlying disease is kidney disease and people ignore it. It's so many people with kidney disease. You hear about heart attack, you hear about cancer, you hear about every disease except the kidney disease. I've been on kidney disease for eight years. Hmm. I'm, I started my documentary. I went to National Community College and the... Uh, college up in Murfreesboro yeah. who's going to help with my documentary because no one listened. No one wants to hear you if you haven't written a book or something. Yes, sir, I noticed. And when I called, of course, like I said, Doc, I might not have been on the proper subject at the time, but I was trying to share with you. I called the, I called the, uh, 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 Metro Police Department. I was trying to get the word out. Pay attention. And you can see the connection here. Disease is infections, 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 infections. I had some infections. Okay, let's talk about this yeah. a little bit, Jackie. Um, yeah, I mean, COVID can have, and, and Jackie says, an impact on kidney disease. It, I can believe that COVID has an impact on a lot of types of diseases, and someone like her who's suffering it from the beginning could have made things worse. Yeah, let me get back to her point, though, about kidney disease. Yeah. This is all within the specialty of nephrology. nephrology. Kidney specialists are nephrologists. Okay. And the kidneys involve all parts of the body. They, they are the body's way of purifying itself. Okay? It's mm -hmm. like kind of like a, a filter, if you sure. will. And ultimately it's you know releases fluids to the bladder and they're expelled. Kidney problems can cause all kinds of other healthcare problems. Um, and so a lot of times if you get to the kidney aspect of it, the nephrology part of it, you can fix the other parts, which mm -hmm. I thought that's what she was trying to say. Think of it as like the kidney is the hub and the spokes lead to other parts of the body that right. it can, it can you know, harm or cause damage to if they're not operating properly. Fortunately, you have two. Mm -hmm. You can live on one. But if you have kidney disease, particularly if you have to have dialysis, which is what I think Jackie says she has to have, one of the main complications of that is the port can get blocked. Yeah. Um, you can have clots. And if they're not managed properly, uh, you see these, by the way, these dialysis clinics like mm -hmm. Fernicius, that's what they do. So they, I see the on I mean, outpatient the, basis. Out, out at Mount Juliet, there was a uh, Ruby Tuesdays that shut down and it was mm -hmm. re renovated. And, and I forget the name of it now. And I remember asking my wife, now, what is it? She goes, that's a dialysis center. Right. People literally pull in and they sit there and they'll do their dialysis on a daily basis or weekly, whatever, right? Yeah. And I'm wondering when Jackie called, it was she mentioned COVID. The, the problem whenever you throw COVID in with kidney disease in a malpractice case is the legislature passed a COVID immunity mm, bill, which immunizes that. doctors and hospitals from any claims if the treatment relates to COVID. It's terrible law yeah, in the just... way it was written because it's written because when the doctor or hospital mismanages a health condition, 
even if it has nothing to do with the fact that the person has COVID, but rather COVID is just a, a part of it. In other words, say you come in, you're sick with COVID, yeah. but you develop a blood clot that had nothing to do with COVID still the immunity law would probably apply. Mm. And so there are a lot of cases where patients could not file a lawsuit who were damaged or killed because they came into the hospital ostensibly for treatment with COVID. Or maybe they never had COVID in the first place, but they were suspected of having COVID. Yeah. And so that may be what have happened to Jackie is people said, well, no, wait a minute, you're not gonna have a claim. But the fact that she's gonna go through with a documentary about this, you know, she has something to say and she's going to say it. Yeah, and there's probably, and there are a lot mm -hmm. of people on dialysis. And I'll fly. Is there a standard of care when it comes to making sure that it's not clogging in your arm? There's a standard of care for everything. Okay, of course there is. So I'm just yeah. wondering though, but are those difficult cases to prosecute or to mm -hmm. rather litigate? Not necessarily. I mean, it depends on what it is. I mean, when you have a, no, port, blockage of a port yeah. is a recognized complication. Okay. Uh, you are supposed to be given informed consent on that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah. But uh, it depends on why it was blocked and was it misdiagnosed and was it mismanaged. Those are things that could lead to a medical negligence case, particularly in situations where the patient dies from it because the dialysis was not managed properly. Uh, Jackie, let us know when that documentary is yeah. completed. Appreciate that. Um, all right, informed consent. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a biggie now. You've talked about that for some time, and you say you have a lot of clients, or you question them. How much were you told ahead of time? I do. We, we going back hundreds of years, uh, this law has, claim has been out there, which is, it, it's rooted in the patient's right to control their body. We all mm -hmm. have the individual right to control what happens to our body. And part of that right means that if someone wants to cut on you or perform a procedure that relates to your body, they are required by the law to give you information about the risks associated with that procedure so you can make an informed choice whether you want somebody to do the procedure. Makes mm -hmm. sense, right? You don't want someone cutting on you without having some idea what the risks are. When I started practicing, there were very few informed consent claims because doctors spent the requisite amount of time with patients explaining what could go wrong. You know, and then if something happens and it's part of the risk, in general, you, you're not gonna have a claim because- the, Because they told you there is a yeah, chance. you knew what you were getting yourself into. Now, there are always exceptions to that, but at least you knew. What I'm finding now, and it's becoming far more commonplace, are situations where the doctors are not spending sufficient time with the patients to discuss the risk, or, Nick, they're delegating that responsibility to their physician extenders, mm -hmm. nurse practitioners, even registered nurses. Say, hey, Nurse Johnson, go tell patient X about the risks associated with gallbladder surgery. And these physician extenders are not spending sufficient time or they're not explaining the risk properly. The patient consents, has the surgery, has a major complication, dies or has, a, you know, loses a limb, says, hey, no one told me that there was a risk of blood clot associated with this procedure. Mm -hmm. Or hey, you didn't tell me that you're going in through the, the leg here trying to clean out my arteries and that it may puncture my artery but, and I might lose my leg. But realistically, Clint, I mean, people are gonna say that and if I have a doctor who mm -hmm. tells me those things and I know I need to have that surgical procedure done, mm -hmm. I'm gonna know there's the risk, but I'm going to do it, unless the, doc the doctor's not gonna say, you know what, the risk involved with this surgery is greater than the condition we're trying to cure. That's not gonna happen, otherwise the doctor's not gonna recommend you even have the procedure, no, right? that's not true. Because they're gonna tell you one of the alternatives, you don't have to have it. I mean, there are- I know, but I mean, you would think that the treatment is not as bad as what you're trying to cure, you know what I mean? Sure it is. What if, what, what if you lose the leg? In other words, the treatment is supposed to relieve pain, like peripheral artery disease. Okay. Patients come in, they've got pain in their leg because the, they're not getting enough blood flow down to their foot, okay? The procedure is designed to open up the artery to allow more blood to go to the leg. Some patients just live with it. Okay. They deal with the pain, they take ibuprofen, they move on with their life, okay? If you have the procedure and an arterial tear occurs and blood gets down into the leg, you can lose your leg. 
Okay. I've had many patients tell me if I had known I would lose my leg as a result of the surgery, I would have never had it. Meaning, okay, meaning pain. that it's not so serious that you would say to yourself, look, I can live with this as opposed to take sure. maybe a 50% risk, I don't know if they give percentages, that I could possibly have a bad outcome. Right. I mean, there's okay. a difference between emergency okay. surgery Good. where you've got to have it because something's going to happen versus quality of life. Okay, you can have a better quality of life with this surgery, but there are patients who say, look, I would have lived with the pain. Gotcha. If you would, but you know, we'll, I don't want to live without my leg. I want to talk more about this, but you know, yeah. it's interesting. We had the, the late great Larry Britton, who co-hosted this show with me, ended up uh, actually we had a cardiologist on, and we talked about it. it. Turned out the next day he was there, and he had open heart surgery the next week because he had chest pains. Yeah. But the doctor came in to him, and he's like, "Well, Larry, I'm going to explain to you what we're going to do." And Larry said, "Doc, you done this before?" And he goes, "Yeah." And he goes, "You know what you're doing?" "Yeah." I don't need to know, just do it. Now, I don't know if there are some attitudes among patients like Larry in that way. Now, in that case, he cleared the way, but he didn't want to know. He goes, don't tell me, just do it. Then you are completely, uh, blindly putting your I trust into the, right. into the surgeon. I, hey, now some I people see that do for that. what it is. I yeah. wouldn't do that. I wouldn't either. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Uh, take some more phone calls, and we'll continue. I want to go a little more detail then, because I think you just corrected me on that on informed consent. Mm -hmm. I, I see exactly what you're saying, mm -hmm. and it can lead to cases, can't it? Oh, absolutely. We'll take a break. Yeah. Back our final segment right after this.